welcome to our review on natural selection. So the first thing that we need to know is what the word evolution means. So if ever you're asked what is evolution, then it is the gradual change in a species over time. So in terms of how this actually comes about, then organisms will evolve through natural selection. And we know this because of the work of Charles Darwin. So what we're going to do is have a look and see the different steps involved in the process of evolution by natural selection. So the first step is that within any particular species of organism, then there is variation. And as we get different mutations occurring, then variation will increase. The next step is what Darwin referred to as survival of the fittest. So quite simply, what this tells us is that the organisms that are best adapted to their environment will survive. If they're not well adapted, well, then they die. For those organisms that have actually managed to survive, then that means that they're going to reproduce. So what we actually have here is a situation where the best adapted are more likely to survive to the age of reproduction. And when they reproduce, what happens is that they pass their genes onto their offspring. And that means that the offspring are likely to have the same advantageous characteristic as their parents have. So what we actually find is that if that process of natural selection is repeated over and over again over a long period of time, then eventually it can result in the development of a new species. And that's all evolution is. It's natural selection occurring over and over again until we've got such a different organism to the one we started with that it's actually classed as a brand new species. So we do have a couple of examples of natural selection that we need to know about. The first one is in the organisms called peppered moths. Now, what we actually find is that before the 19th century here in England, then the majority of the peppered moths that you would encounter were light coloured. And the reason behind that was that they would camouflage on the bark of the trees, as you can see in the top picture there. The actual light coloured one is really quite hard to see on the right hand side of the picture. But any of them that were dark coloured obviously stood out, as we can see. And that meant that any birds looking for a quick snack, they could spot the dark coloured ones and therefore they were eaten more often. So that meant in the population, there were a lot more pale coloured ones than dark coloured ones. Then the Industrial Revolution came along and we didn't have any clean air laws back in those days. So lots and lots of factories chucking out loads of smoke into the actual atmosphere. And as a result of that, the trees became covered in soot, making them all dark. So at that point, what we saw was a complete flip in actual situation. So the dark coloured moths were much better camouflaged. The pale coloured moths stood out like a sore thumb. And therefore, the pale coloured moths were eaten by the birds. And we saw that complete change in the actual population. So the dark coloured moths were then way more common in urban areas than the pale coloured moths. The second example we have is in our bacteria showing their antibiotic resistance. Now, with bacteria, because they actually reproduce every 20 minutes in some cases, then they will evolve in a relatively short space of time because of that rapid rate of reproduction. So if you get a mutation that makes a bacterium actually resistant to an antibiotic, then because they do reproduce by mitosis, producing those clones genetically identical to their parent, then all offspring get that mutation as well. So what we may find is that in a very short space of time, that whole species of bacteria is resistant to an antibiotic, which is why we're now starting to see big problems with antibiotic resistance in the world as a whole.